Welcome to Fix It Home Improvement, covering projects that every homeowner should know and great products for home and garden. Hi, I'm JC, and this is where we share weekly home improvement tips. I'm here with my co host, Cindy. Hello, JC. Hi, Cindy. This week we're going to talk about Juro Spiders, and we'd like to thank Tracy Ashmus for liking and sharing the podcast. And if you've downloaded our last ebook, Book 16, we would appreciate a rating and review on Amazon. Well, it's not just called Book 16. Home Improvement Solutions, What Every Homeowner Should Know, Book 16. Why on, are you yelling at me? <laughs> on Amazon. <laughs> Get all 16. Mm -hmm. One of the oldest spider webs was found in a piece of amber dating back about 140 million years. And the amber contained insect droppings and plant material. Researchers believe the thread was woven by an ancestor of the orb-weaving spider, which deposits tiny drops of a sticky substance and that helps trap their prey. Hmm. The threads in the amber they found had droplets attached to them, And after analyzing the amber, they think the spider was feeding on the ancestors of flies, moths, bees, and wasps. Exciting. This week, we're going to talk about the Joro spider. So, at the beginning of the year, I saw a story about them in Georgia. Right. And so, I added it to the podcast list because I thought we already did an episode on spiders. Yeah, I thought we did, too. We did not. (laughs) We did one on centipedes, silverfish, right. bats. Love the bat episode. Nobody else did. <laughs> yeah, it's still one of our least listened to episodes. Shocking. So the Juro spider is native to Asia and named after a Japanese spider demon. The first person to name the species was L. Koch. He was a German entomologist in 1878. So the female Jural spider is oval-shaped, it has a yellow body with gray and dark blue stripes, and it can be up to an inch long, the body, Mm -hmm. but the legs can span three to four inches. Wow, so So, it's big. Yeah, when it spreads its its legs out, it can be as large as your palm. The female's abdomen is red, yellow, and black, and they have black legs with yellow stripes. The male Jural spider, though, is smaller, and its body is shades of brown. So, less impressive looking. Right. The female can lay a thousand eggs or more in an egg sac, which is about an inch long, and entomologists say they're very good at expanding their territory because when the hatchlings emerge from the egg sac, they climb to a high point, they spin a silk thread, they jump into the air, and they ride it so they land in a new area, and it can travel over 50 miles with a good current of air. Wow. That's wild, huh? Mm-hmm. How long do they live? They live about a year. What do they eat? So they eat mosquitoes, flies, stink bugs, aphids, and other insects. The University of Maryland thinks the Juro spider may be beneficial to help control crop pests like stink bugs and the spotted lanternfly. Stink bugs are found in most states, and they're very destructive to crops. The Jural spider is one of the few insects that eat stink bugs, hmm. plus they eat a lot of other pests. The university thinks that they can really be good in the South where there's an abundance of bugs. Gross. And they're good food for birds. Nice. Are they harmful to people? They have small mouth parts, so they're going to have difficulty piercing your skin with their fangs. And they also have a weak venom. Do they have fangs? Yes, they do. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they. Well, you think I'd make that up? Yes. <laughs> so if they do pierce your skin with their fangs, their bite is generally less painful than a bee sting. You're going to have localized pain and redness. And they're a timid spider, so they'll usually run when their web is agitated. Mm. They have big webs, right? Yeah, they're an orb weaver spider, mm. so they make large round webs. Some get as wide as 10 feet. Wow. Yeah, pretty wild. They create a series of orbs or spirals that they attach to trees and bushes or structures, and they have a unique silk thread that's yellow or gold in color, and it's very sticky and strong. So it's hard to see, right? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. When I I read a lot of articles, people were freaked out because they didn't see it, and they get tangled in this huge web. Yuck. And the spider was primarily found in Japan, Korea, Taiwan, and China, 
but the National Library of Medicine says the first evidence of the Juro spider in the U.S. was in Georgia in 2014. Hmm. And entomologists think the spider is going to spread pretty well in the U.S. because Japan has a very similar climate to the U.S. Exciting. <laughs> Are they in any other states? Right now they've been found in Georgia, South Carolina, and Tennessee, the University of Georgia is asking people to help them track how the spiders are spreading. If you find one around your home, they're asking that you take pictures and send it to the Department of Entomology and give the date and your location. The University of Georgia recommends not killing the Jura spiders? Right. They say they suppress pests naturally without pesticides, so they're good to have around your home. Although I read a CBS article, and they interviewed a few people with the Juro spiders around their home, one gentleman said last year he had maybe a dozen spiders in his backyard, mm -hmm. and this year he has several hundred. <laughs> <laughs> he says it looks like a scene out of arachnophobia. Yeah. <laughs> Let's review some tips to keep pests out of your home. The Smithsonian Magazine says homeowners who want to minimize insects around their home should have amber-colored lights in their outdoor lights. They say researchers studying different colored light bulbs found that bug traps with amber-colored light had 60% fewer insects and fewer disease-carrying insects than bug traps with white lights. Hmm. You should keep your gutters clean. Clogged gutters give mosquitoes, flies, and other insects a place to breed. Check roof and attic vents and add insect screening to prevent pests from getting into your attic. Trim back landscape plants so there's a space between the plants and your home. Air movement and sunlight will keep the soil drier, and that's going to help reduce insects next to your home. Uh -huh. Extend gutter downspouts to six feet or more away from your home, and that's going to reduce moisture around your home. Check the weather strip around your doors and windows yearly. Also, check the trim around doors and windows and fill any gaps with outdoor rated caulk. Cool. Fix or replace window and door screen. Move firewood away from your house. Check your siding for gaps or holes and fill it with caulk. And use a broom routinely to remove spider webs and egg sacs from around your home. Egg sacs can have hundreds of eggs in them. Gross. <laughs> Keep garbage cans tightly closed and away from your house. Flies lay eggs in garbage, grass clippings, and feces, so pick up pet waste from around your house. Flies can spread disease and bacteria. Penn State University says at least 65 diseases can be carried by flies and transferred by their legs to surfaces that they land on. Yeah. They also say flies in cities have more pathogens than flies in the country. Hmm. If you're thinking about buying a fly swatter, you have two main types. One has a plastic handle with a plastic head, and the other style has a metal wire handle with a plastic head. My dad liked those. The metal ones? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're more accurate. So the metal handle with the plastic head will squish a fly, so it'll kill it and create a mark. What are you supposed to do? <laughs> well, what's mm -hmm. interesting about the plastic handle and the plastic head is it generates less force, so if you smack it against a wall, it usually doesn't leave a mark. It just stuns it or it could kill it. But if you have big spiders in your house, the plastic handle may not kill or stop a big spider, so you need the metal wire handle with the plastic head. You can always step on them. <laughs> or step on them. Are spiders considered insects? Spiders are arachnids. So, yes or no? No. <laughs> no. So spiders have two body parts and eight legs, where insects, that category of insects, they have three body parts and six legs. Oh, super exciting. And there's also other differences, like in their eyes and wings and other stuff. Mm. Okay. You can use a perimeter spray for insects or a granular insect killer all around your home where the foundation meets the soil, and then use a spray around windows and doors and any penetrations into your home for utilities. And I would also check any utilities coming into your home for gaps and fill those with caulk. Mm -hmm. Some top-rated outdoor perimeter sprays come from Ortho, O-R-T-H-O, Bio Advanced, it's B I O, capital A D V A N C E D. 
and Spectracide, S-P-E-C-T-R-A-C-I-D-E, and one of their sprays is called Terminate. Hmm. There's also a product called Deplete. It's D-E-P-L-E-T-E. It's a natural plant-based formula, so it's less toxic for insect control. Cool. For inside your home, you can use boric acid. It's B-O-R-I-C. It's low toxicity to people and pets if you follow the application instructions. It kills insects that groom themselves, like ants, roaches, and silverfish. And it usually comes in a bottle that you can squeeze and puff a thin coat under appliances or baseboard. And a thin coat is more effective than having piles of boric acid. Right, because they avoid it. Right. Some top-rated boric acid comes from Harris, H-A-R-R-I-S. Hot Shot, it's H-O-T, capital S-H-O-T, and E-N-O-Z, E-N-O-Z. Diatomaceous Earth is another fine powder that comes in a bottle that you can puff under cracks and crevices or under appliances. And this is the fossilized remains of hard-shelled algae, millions of years old. Everybody knows you love it. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It kills roaches, ants, silverfish, and other insects, and it's mechanical. Insects can't build up a tolerance to it. It's abrasive, and it cuts up the outer waxy protective coating that covers insects. So they dehydrate and they die. This is non-toxic, but you shouldn't breathe it in, so you should be wearing a dust mask. Well, with any of these powders, you should be wearing a dust mask when you apply it. Right. Some top-rated diatomaceous earth comes from Harris, H-A-R-R-I-S, Hot Shot, H-O-T, capital S-H-O-T, and Safer, S-A-F-E-R. The Entomological Society of America says a study was done by Simon Fraser University, the University of Ulm in Germany, and the University of Toronto in Canada to see if the most common natural spider repellents actually work. Hmm. And they say that common recommendations are lemon oil, peppermint oil, and chestnuts. And they tested three common spider species found in North America and Europe. The test used a Y-shaped tube that ended in one of the three substances, and they recorded which path was taken, and then if the spider stayed at the end of one of the arms of the tube for at least 30 seconds. Chestnuts and peppermint oil repelled two of the spider species about 75% of the time, Hmm. but lemon oil didn't have any significant effect on any of the three spider species. Bummer. They're now studying other spider species and running tests if natural repellents could cause spiders to relocate, which would be good for homeowners who want to use non-toxic repellents on their home. They say for the average consumer... Chestnut and peppermint oil has some potential repellency for spiders if you want to use a natural compound. Hmm. They say brown widow, also known as house button spiders, and the European garden spider was repelled by chestnut and peppermint oil 75% of the time. The false widow spider, also known as the cupboard spider, wasn't deterred by any of the natural repellents. Boo. There's a company called Mighty Mint, it's M-I-G-H-T-Y, capital M-I-N-T, that has an insect spray. It uses peppermint oil, and you can pick that up at the home centers. Cool. Do you have anything else to add? Spiders aren't bad to have around your home. Unless you're skittish. (laughs) Right. Well, you want them on the outside because they'll eat mosquitoes and other pests. Mm -hmm. But if you do have a fear of spiders, lizards, toads, and birds eat spiders. So you can add to your landscape design a frog pond and bird feeders. Hmm. Ben, let's wrap this up. You can subscribe to the podcast on your favorite podcast app. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a review. You can check out our home improvement videos on our YouTube channel, Fix It Home Improvement. And you can subscribe to that as well. You can download our ebooks, Home Improvement Solutions, What Every Homeowner Should Know, books 1 through 16 on Amazon. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a five star rating and review. You can email us at fixitpodcast at gmail.com. You can follow Cindy on Twitter at fixitcohost. And you can follow us on Instagram, fixithomeimprovement. Thank you for listening. Talk to you next week. Deep, 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 deep,
Jupiter, 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 Jupi